Hello everybody and welcome back here to the channel for some more unboxing and testing of some new sim products. Big thank you to Camus for sending this out to me so that I can give you guys my impressions, unbox it, take a look at it, throw it through its paces. They have sent me their direct drive 15 newton meter wheel hub and a steering wheel to test and give my opinions on. So once again a big thank you to Camus for sending this stuff out. We're going to get this wheelbase aside. It's a heavy boy. And we're going to start by taking a look at what's in the hub box. I'm going to flip this over, take a look at what's inside this canvas hub box and what we got working with for this. So we have a very nice looking carbon fiber initially. So we're going to start with all the little bits first. We have a bunch of hardware. It looks like a different types of screw sets for whether maybe going straight to the quick release and then through and everything like that. Ooh, we have a really nice Camus steering wheel delete, like horn delete plate, steering wheel plate. That's actually really nice. Nice uh, etched in Camus with the little silver trim. So that's definitely a nice thing. And then we have the quick release for the back of this standard standard style quick release very similar like the NRG quick release cams on top it looks like it's got a button lock and of course we have our wiring pin and everything like that to go into the base retractable pins which is actually really nice just like the Moza racing and all that so that's kind of cool that you can see the inside of the pins there oh wow that's actually uh quite nice it's different different having that button but so we got that on there as well which we're gonna have to put together so now we have to take a look of course at this button box for the wheel one thing about this this is really tucked in here and really well packaged so we have a nice big carbon fiber plate and Magnetic carbon fiber pedals with the, you know, the plus cut out of it and the minus, which is actually something cool. Some pretty textile-y feeling buttons. Of course, we have rotary knobs. Oh, they also click in, too. All right, that's pretty cool. Nice physical, like, click. Kind of quiet. Then we have a, oh, like a position toggle switch. Okay, so that's cool. That's, like, something cool to do for, like, ignition status and stuff like that. And then we have a three position switch on this side that's really awesome nice aluminum and there's of course the pin connector where this is going to click into which we're going to assemble this all afterwards apparently this is a little bit colder than uh, my skin it's causing that so we got some really nice looking carbon fiber and a really nice box i really like these switches like these toggle switches definitely something cool to have three position switch whether it's like ignition or let's say you know starter or whatnot and some decent buttons and things like that so the hub actually looks quite nice then they did send over one of their wheels with it as well which we're going to take a look at real quick there we go this is very reminisce to the Moza wheel that's on the RS, the RS, the original RS. The same, you know, yellow stitching, the yellow top, you know, the kind of dimpled feeling, uh, come on, focus, dimple feeling leather or faux leather or everything like that. Not entirely sure. Again, definitely take a look and see what that is. So, got a little bit of imperfections in the leather and stuff like that but you got some grip points which is really nice and then so this will easily you know it's different because every other canvas i've seen has had red stitching so that is going to go right on there so we're going to get this fully assembled here but we're going to take a look at the wheelbase so we're going to get this out of the way for right now come back to that in a minute because we got to bring Oh, this chunky boy up here on this table. This thing is a hefty box. So we're going to open this up and take a look at this. <laughs> that is with some force. That is solid. 
So this is their 15 newton meter direct drive base. So we pop that up there, try and get as center as possible and take this off. And there is the working bits. Nice salad, really nice canvas on the side. That's a, it's a bit of a bigger, bigger base. I mean, for a comparison, you know, the R5 is like this for Moses. So it's a bit of a bigger base, but I mean, it is a 15 newton meter base. So we'll start with all the partitions part before we go into looking at everything else. We got some mounting hardware and a USB cable, which this looks like is the same as the one's already on my rig. So I may actually just keep the one that I'm using for my Moza base and put this on there. So we got that. Of course, we got the power brick. This is a hefty brick. Ooh, that is a really big brick. That is a massively large canvas power switch module. Oh, wow. But I mean, when you're running 15 meters, you got to have a lot of power. So I'm going to have to find a place to put this so that I can keep my wiring and everything clean. So in the meantime, we're going to set this aside. And we got to get the good thing out. Make sure there's nothing in this box. All right. So now we're going to get this canvas base out. Jeez, man. They really packed these things in here. Not worried about it getting damaged in shipping or anything like that. Oh, man. Oh, there we go. We got it out of there. All right, so what we're going to do is we're going to take this out. We're going to set this on the table. And we're going to get this box out of the way. So we can put this thing on the table. I kind of want to place that down there. So the canvas base... It's a, th it's a thick, chunky base, and it's already got the hub and everything on it. But what I'm really liking on the front of this is you have buttons and rotary dials, and this is and a three-position switch, and the up and the up-down switch as well. So different style center, but still the same style quick release as all of my other direct drives that we have. And if we take a look at the back of this big thing, we have a lot of ports. We have shifter, shifter two, e-stops. Not sure what that is. I'm sure it's probably like a uh, display. And of course we have like pedal, handbrake, shifter one. And every, there's a lot of ports back here. Big cooling fan, very nice aircraft grade aluminum. Got some channels on the side. So if you wanna side mount it, I believe they have brackets for that as well. And on the bottom of this thing, we have standard screw points. So that's a, a very big plus that it's going to be able to mount nicely to my next level chassis. But this thing is super nice. Big, big old power button on the front. And, you know, really very hefty and very heavy duty. This thing is extremely with that, like, nice silver edge. And, you know, that canvas collar with, like I said, the quick release on there. Is definitely uh, super nice, and in theory, this thing should just. Well, I gotta find which. Where's the top? The top is probably gonna be there, and then top is probably gonna be where that is. Or is that gonna be the bottom? That may be the bottom, and that's that. But of course, you can set this however you really want, essentially. But that's kind of nice that it has the button on it. So in order to release it, you have to press the button in and pop it up. It comes right off. So apparently, I was being a little bit dumb about it. And these need to be on the side for it to actually work correctly. But I'm trying to find that button's on the side now. So it is screwing in. So hopefully, once we get this onto the chassis we'll be able to center it all and it won't really matter where the quick release actually is but overall the look of it is going to be nice the paddles are going to be in a very nice location they're not going to hit my fingers so things are within reach so that's pretty nice. So we're going to get this fully screwed in, get it on the rig. And we're going to go full first C send and see if we need to move this in any other location or anything like that.
All right, so we do now have the Camus mounted on the Next Level Racing chassis. Uh, one thing I would like to make note is the Next Level chassis, the holes on the bottom, didn't actually match up to the Camus base. If you had the side plates, it probably would have matched up to a bunch of these holes. So I had to put holes in the base in order to mount the Camus directly to it. But we all have it on. These buttons all have lights, which is actually pretty awesome. And we have the dials and things like that. We have the wheel and everything all fully assembled. We do have the basic settings on for this. So we're going to actually just give it a first initial test on basic settings. You know, no fine tuning or anything. Here on iRacing, we did set these switches to ignition and starter. Which is actually kind of cool to have that. So we're going to go full send. We're going to get our wheel on. There we go. So we are on. Oh, that also these also light up too. That's actually awesome. So everything is working fully. So we are running. If I turn that off. Oh, yep, yep. Sorry, ignition's off. The first initial test with the Camus here in iRacing, we're at um, MX5 Cup Car. We're gonna go full send. Just initial testing of it. Initial feel of it and already can definitely feel a difference between my other direct drives with of course this being 15 newton meters of force on the DD it's definitely more feel oh boy and this is on basic settings on the canvas app it was very easy to install the canvas app just installed off their website Plugged everything in and just hit my zero center to make sure my wheel was centered. Center calibration and we're out here. Full send here in iRacing in the MX-5 Cup. And my initial impressions of this feedback is this wheel feels very incredibly smooth and the feedback is definitely extremely there more so than other wheels that I've tested and driven on this of course is the highest newton meter wheel that I've had that bump almost got me oh can't control of it <laughs> It is nice that the wheel was able to rotate back. This wheel is going to be definitely very interesting in drifting. We're going to go full send with this in drifting, of course, as well as some other games. As we all know, we're going to be doing some drifting with the canvas wheel to see how it reacts to some of the pro cars, some street cars, and stuff like that. Oh, that wheel is very heavy. So we're going to have to go do some fine tuning of the wheelbase, of course. But overall, first impressions of the wheel, everything kind of went together really easily other than the mounting it to the next level chassis. But other than that, everything seemed to be quite sound initially after I uh, got the wheel and everything installed with you know, quick release and everything on there. And I'm actually having a blast right now in this car on this track. Little slides. So make sure you guys follow me on all social media. All you found in the description box below. If you guys like this and you guys want to keep seeing more here on iRacing, as well as I'll leave the link for all the cameras down below. Once again, a big thank you to Camus for sending this out to me so I can give this thing a torture test and a shakedown in all racing and drifting and all that. So drifting videos coming up here very shortly with the 15 Newton meter Camus DD. So as always, I'd like to thank you guys for coming back and watching. I'm Evil Rabbit. I'll see you guys on the track.